Hi and welcome to One Medicine. I'll talk about tuberous sclerosis complex today. It's one of the very important genodermatoses in dermatology. Tuberous sclerosis complex is also called as epiloia. It's called as epiloia because we see epilepsy in this. There will be low IQ and adenoma sebation. So because of this condition it is called as epiloia. It's also called as Bonneville's disease as it was first described by a French neurologist called Bonneville in 1880. It's also called as Bonneville Pringle disease. So tuberous sclerosis complex is a multi-system hematomatosis involving mainly the skin, eyes, central nervous system, heart, kidney and lungs. So it's called as a complex because there's multiple organ involvement that is seen in this particular condition. It's a hematoma that is seen. It can affect all ethnic groups and the incidence is 1 in 10,000 births. It's a genetic disorder which carries an autosomal dominant inheritance pattern. There are two genes which are affected here. Tuberous sclerosis 1 gene and 2 gene. Tuberous sclerosis 1 gene is present on 9q34 chromosome and it encodes for the protein hamartin. Tuberous sclerosis 2 is present on 16p13 and it encodes for tuberin. And this gene is closely related to polycystic kidney disease 1 uh, gene also. Coming to the pathogenesis of this condition, it's more severe, the clinical presentation is more severe if the patient has got TSC2 mutation, the clinical features would be more. It's uh, not necessary that all patients have mutation. In 15% of the cases, there was no mutation which was actually found. So, non-mutated uh, cases also of tuberous sclerosis were also found. In these patients, it was found that Caesar, uh, seizures were less, but they had more of renal angiomyolipomas and pulmonary lymphangiomyomas. The incidence of systemic involvement was more in uh, these particular patients. And uh, if they had no mutations found, the severity was less than TSC2 mutation, but it was more than TSC1 mutation that was seen. So there are complex pathways which are involved in the pathogenesis of this condition. Certain pathways are the Reb pathway, this is REHB, mtorq one Notch, P42 and 44 MAP kinase pathway and NF kappa B RAP1 pathways. All of these pathways are basically involved in uh, causing the disease. Most common pathway involved is the REB pathway, which is involved. Coming to the clinical features, we have cutaneous features and other extra cutaneous features that are present in this. First important is the adenoma sebation, otherwise called as cutaneous angiofibroma. The correct name would be the cutaneous angiofibroma. Misnomer is this adenoma sebation. It presents at the age of 3 or 4 years of age and it is seen as 1 to 10 millimeter diameter, reddish pink dome shaped telangiectetic papule. Okay, there will be this dome shaped telangiectetic papule distributed symmetrically. The distribution is very important over the nasolabial folds, cheek, chin, eyelids, forehead, ears, and scalp. Mostly seen on the nasolabial fold, cheeks, and chin. And they become more extensive during puberty also. The increase in number in puberty is seen here. It's confined only to nasolabial furrows sometimes or sometimes large cauliflower like lesions also can be seen. Uh, sometimes uh, in uni this, uh, the lesions are unilateral if it's a mosaic form of the condition. Okay. Cutaneous angiofibromas are not only seen in tuberous sclerosis, they are also present in MEN1 type of syndrome that is multiple endocrine neoplasia 1 type and also it is present in a condition called as Bert Hogg Dubay syndrome. So in these conditions also you find cutaneous angiofibromas. So these are the cutaneous angiofibromas. You see the nasolabial fold being involved here. So, and the tiny dome shaped pinkish to reddish uh, papules which are present over the cheeks and chin also you can find it. So, don't just by looking at the picture go into a diagnosis of either trichopithelium or acne. Further, you have to evaluate to find, uh, find out whether it is tuberous sclerosis or no because it is a complex. So, many other manifestations also would be present. So, look for those manifestations before coming to a diagnosis. Next manifestation would be ash leaf macules, a very important manifestation present in 90% of the patients and it is present at birth also. Okay, so ash leaf macules is very important. These are 1 to 3 centimeter lanceolate. Lanceolate means at one end it will be rounded, the other end would be tapered. So, okay, it is named after the eastern mountain ash tree. Uh, the leaves are like that so it is named after that and the shape would be lanceolate like this hypopigmented macules which are mostly present on the trunk and limbs you find this hypopigmented macules easily seen in face skin individuals with oats lamp oats lamp is a very important bedside investigation you can see the hypopigmented macules and they're very well appreciated in oats lamp examination they are present at birth or they may appear during infancy the number varies from they can only have very few lesions to up to 75 in number also so these are the ash leaf macules which are present okay sometimes normally in two to three 
per thousand uh, people also you can find normally these ash leaf microbes would be present without any other manifestations of tuberous sclerosis complex so again be careful while diagnosing it next lesion be confetti like lesions these are numerous one to three millimeter diameter white spots which are symmetrically seen over the extremities more commonly seen if the patient is more than 10 years of age okay these confetti lesions would be seen so here you can see the lines of eight shaped ash leaf macula on the limb and these are the multiple confetti lesions okay hypopigmented uh, lesions one to three millimeter diameter next lesion would be the chagrin patch chagrin patch is also called as truncal plaque because it is seen on the lumbosacral area otherwise it's called as pau de chagrin because of the appearance that is seen here that is the orange peel appearance or it is called as pig skin like lesion so it looks like pig skin or leather like so these are the features of the chagrin patch it appears with angiofibroma these are skin colored raised soft irregular thickening with multiple dimples so there's a plaque present raised plaque or a raised reddish plaque present here and there'll be numerous openings in the plaque because they are the dilated follicles that are present okay dimple like openings would be present at follicle opening simulating an orange peel that's why it's called as uh, powder chagrin also they're less than one centimeter in diameter through several inches also and they're solitary or sometimes they can be multiple also the most common site where they're present are the lumbosacral area so that is important other sites that you have to look for are the breast and the back they can be present even there and histologically if you see the chagrin patches have abundant collagen in them they'll be absent elastin they'll be abundant collagen present in these particular fibers okay in these particular uh, lesions so here you can see the chagrin patch here is a hypopigmented patch again on the lumbosacral area next is the conan's tumors which are uh, a characteristic feature this is very pathognomic of the tuberous sclerosis it's also called as garlic clove fibroma orals is also called as periangle or subangal fibroma these are 1 to 10 millimeter small smooth skin colored or pink colored firm projections with hyperkeratotic tips so they are firm projections and they've got hyperkeratotic tip also they arise from beneath the proximal or the lateral nail fold so from under surface of the lateral or the proximal nail fold they arise and they extend over the nail plate with midline depression of the nail plate they cause and they appear in toes around puberty they appear so these are the important nail changes which are seen in tuberous sclerosis. Other nail changes would be red comet, splinter hemorrhages, longitudinal leukonychia also can be present. So these are the Conan's tumors. You can see they are arising from beneath the proximal nail plate and they have a hyperkeratotic tip also. So the tip is hyperkeratotic, right? Here also you can see. So that's and they go on to uh, form depressions in the nail plate. They extend from under surface of the proximal nail fold and they are going on to the nail plate here. So these are the Conan's tumors. Then you have fibrotic plaque or nodule. They're mostly seen on the forehead, cheeks and scalp. There'll be just a plaque present. They're skin colored, firm and large. They may be present at birth also. Other non-specific lesions like the patients can have uh, cafeole macules, soft pedunculated fibromas, that is a molluscum pendulum. They can have molluscum fibrosum pendulum. Diffuse bronzing of the skin can also be present. Sometimes poliosis uh, can be present of the eyelids or of the scalp. That is localized whitening of hair can also be present sometimes. The patients can also have intraoral fibromas. Intraoral fibromas can be present. Gingival fibromas can be present. Uh, and uh, dental enamel pits can be present. All of those lesions also are present. So this is the forehead fibrotic plaque seen here. Ocular lesions is the patients will have retinal hematomas. Okay, these are nothing but flat gray yellow streaks along the blood vessels. So there will be yellow streaks along the blood vessels or elevated multinodular lesions which resembles mulberry type lesions also would be present. They are asymptomatic usually but sometimes they may give rise to scotomas and amaurosis also. Other lesions other than retinal hematomas are you see white pedunculated conjunctival tumors, glial hematoma of optic disc that is giant drusen can be seen. Glial hematomas can be seen everywhere there will be hematomas basically and like the ash leaf macules that are present on the skin there can be white spots in the iris and retina also can have white spots present okay so here is the retinal hematoma seen in this particular image seen as lesions would be cerebral cortex is involved with sclerotic areas and subependymal nodules so subependymal giant cell astrocytoma subependymal giant cell astrocytomas would be present subependymal nodules are present and cortical tubers are present okay cortical tubers uh, are named because they look like uh, potatoes so that's why they're called cortical tubers they can be present if they're obstructing uh, then they can cause obstructive uh, hydrocephalus also the patient will have main presentation with seizures mental retardation autism like features 
features behavioral disorders anxiety depression they might have okay uh, so various presentations they will have and you have to evaluate further intellectual ability also would be reduced in them mental retardation would be present cardiac lesions like rhabdomyo sarcoma is present and they may lead to sudden cardiac death and arrhythmias in the patient so that evaluation evaluation with the ecg and echocardiography needs to be done renal lesions like angiomyelopathy would be present multiple renal uh, cysts or uh, renal cell carcinomas and oncocytomas can be present if renal angioma is more than 4 cm and if the patient has got aneurysms of the renal arteries also if that is more than 5 mm then the patient is going for shock he can go for shock and that has to be evaluated further okay pulmonary deletions like the patient's kind of multifocal micronodular pneumocyte hyperplasia can be present spontaneous pneumothorax pulmonary lymphangiomyomas can be present other lesions like gi colonic polyps the patients can have cysts in the pancreas thyroid and testis pituitary adrenal dysfunction bony abnormalities can be present associations of the condition are autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease situs inversus totalis and polysplenia So this is diagnostic criteria wherein we have major and minor criteria. So we have major criteria, then we have minor criteria. In the major criteria, patients should have hypomelanotic macules which are more than three number and more than five millimeter in diameter. Facial angiofibromas more than three number or fibrous cephalic or the fibrous uh, forehead plaque. Angular fibromas more than two in number that is the Conan tumors. Then shagreen patch. The patient should also have multiple retinal hematomas, cortical dysplasia, subependymal nodule, subependymal giant cell astrocytoma, cardiac rhabdomyoma, lymphangiomyomatosis, and angiomyelopathy. So the patients will have skin features along with CNS features, and then cardiac feature, renal feature, eyes, and lungs. So that has to be involved in for the major criteria. For the minor criteria, the patient should have confetti-like lesions, that is, hypopigmented macules in the distal extremities, dental enamel pits, intraoral fibromas, retinal achromic patch, multiple renal cysts, and non-retinal hematomas. Non-retinal hematomas should be present, so these has to be present. For definitive diagnosis, either two major criteria or the patient should have one major plus more than two minor criteria. If the diagnosis is definitive. For possible, the patient can have one major criteria or the patient should have more than two minor criteria. should be present or the mutation has to be present tsc1 or two mutations in dna samples from the blood or normal tissue not from the affected tissue from normal tissue or from the blood if you take that has to be positive for the diagnosis so this is the diagnostic revised diagnostic criteria for tuberous sclerosis complex given in 2012 investigations you do other than that is wood lamp examination to look out for the ash leaf macules hypopigmented macules if it is not visible properly ophthalmoscopic examination for the retinal hematomas and other changes ct mri of the brain for the subepidermal giant cell astrocytomas or subepidermal nodules and cortical tubers neonatal 2d echo to find out about rhabdomyosarcoma abdominal ust for renal lesions or or else if the patient is older enough older patient ct or mri also can be done for the same differential diagnosis would be for angiofibromas they have to be differentiated from common lesions which can be seen on the face like acne trichoepithelioma varicose lesions milia xanthomas and trichofolliculoma trichoepithelium whatever lesions that are uh, commonly seen on the face you have to differentiate it from that okay uh, it can be syringomas it can be dermal melanocytic nevi all of the xanthomas also ash leaf macules to be differentiated from vitiligo you have nevus depigmentosus nevus anemicus pityriasis alba Varsicolor, leprosy, Vordenberg syndrome, hypopigmented MF that is mycosis fungoides. So differentiated from other hypopigmentary disorders. Intracranial calcification needs to be differentiated from Sturge Weber syndrome, CMV infection that is cytomegalovirus infection, basal cell nevus syndrome. Wherein we also we can't find the intra uh, cranial calcifications uh, can be found in them also. And uh, this uh, Conan's tumors that is subungual fibromas needs to be differentiated from uh, Ward, Corn. or any exos exostosis can be present or scs you have to differentiate it from them and the shagreen patch needs to be differentiated from elastoma collagenoma xanthomas and dermal nevi certain features uh, will be similar so you have to differentiate it from all of them okay 
ट्रीटमेंट वुड बी फॉर ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव हाइड्रोकेफेलस न्यूरोसर्जिकल ओपिनियन नीड्स टू बी टेकन माइक्रोसर्जिकल रिमूवल ऑफ द ब्रेन यो प्लाजम्स कैन बी डन सिंस एम टॉर इज इन्वॉल्व हेयर एम टॉर इन बिटर आपोमाइसिन कैन बी गिवन कैन बी गिवन ओरल एंड टॉपिकल ऑल्सो टॉपिकल जीरो पॉइंट जीरो वन फाइव टू जीरो पॉइंट जीरो थ्री परसेंट कैन बी गिवन देन इमेटिन एबिच टायरोसिन कैन इज इन बिटर कैन बी ट्राइड पल्स डाय लेजर सीओ टू लेजर फॉर एंजियो फेब्रोमास इज डन विगा बैटरी ऑल्सो इज गिवन विच इज अवर्सिबल गाबा ट्रांसमेन इज इन बिटर for treating the seizures that are seen in this condition that also can be started these are the treatment options available